Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm coming at you guys with another Ask Nikki. It has been a while. It feels like it's been forever because it's been forever. <laughs> you guys have either forgotten what this series is or don't know what this series is. I'm just going to break it down real quick before we jump right into it. So this series is exactly what it sounds like. I created an email at asknikki at yahoo.com that my Glamazons can reach out to me with their personal issues and things that they're going through in their personal life and I give them my mediocre advice. I am not a psychologist, a psychiatrist, or counselor by any means, but I have had some experiences in my life as you guys have heard and seen through my story times and I think sometimes they could be of help to you guys. I really enjoy this series because it helps me connect with you guys on a whole different level and lets you guys not only get my personal opinion on what you should do about your particular situation but also I have polls that you can find on the right top hand corner of your screen and your fellow Glamazons can vote and give you their personal opinion there as well as in the comments down below. So I just feel like it's a really great way for us to come together as a community and help each other out because we all go through some crazy crazy stuff in our life and as much as we'd like to pretend like our life is perfect and normal and everything else it's really really not so um, we're just gonna jump right into it like I said before this email is asknikki at yahoo.com if you guys are interested in going through something right now and would like the chance to be featured in one of my next Ask Nikki videos definitely email me at asknikki at yahoo.com it's completely separate from my business email so make sure that you are emailing the right place but you know asknikki emails need to go to asknikki at yahoo.com as usual, before we get into today's Ask Nikki, I don't believe that I was doing Glamazon shots with Ask Nikki's in the past, but I'm going to start doing them because I want to. So today's Glamour shot of the day is my beautiful Glamazon, Janae. She is so gorgeous. I love these shots of you. Your hair is amazing. I just am in love with curly hair. You look amazing. Thank you so much for all of your love and support and all of you guys just sending me your Glamour shots just because it really does make my day. It means the world to me. So thank you guys so much for all of your love and support you guys don't know how much that does for me and I really really appreciate it so I thank you from the bottom of my heart now let's get into this as Nikki girl so, as usual with this series I'm just going to jump right into my ask Nikki emails okay and I'm going to go through and read the emails that are kind of catching my eye if you guys are going to email me make sure that you try to make it as short and sweet as possible because I will be reading this on video and we don't want to bore people right also uh, for a better chance for you to be featured in a video to get my mediocre advice as well as everyone else's try to make your subject line pop a little bit okay it's kind of like coming up with a catchy title for YouTube you know what I'm saying like you want to be able to stand out from the crowd because there are hundreds of people that email me so um, those are just a few little <laughs> a few little tips to get my attention when it comes to this email. So first, let me see if she wants to remain anonymous. Nope, okay, so in your email, you can let me know if you wanna remain anonymous. Um, just let me know in the beginning of your email before you start your spiel, so that way I can make up a name for you, okay? So we're gonna start off with this email. The subject line is called my stepdad with quotes around stepdad, okay? Now, as most of you guys know, I have my own experience with a crazy stepdad. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so hey Nikki, my name is Vanessa and I'm 14 years old and I love your videos so much. I've been raised by my single mother for as long as I can remember. Let me tell you a little bit of a backstory. My mom and I have a very special bond and I trust her a lot and love her to death as she does me. My mom has taught me to be strong, independent, and hardworking and I'm really grateful to have her in my life. Now to the story. Last spring break, my mom and part of my family all went to Florida so we could be introduced to my mom's soon-to-be boyfriend. Of course, I was super excited and happy for my mom because I just wanted to see her happy. He asked my mom out on the beach and also bought her a ring things moving quickly okay but after spring break and as time went by things gradually started going a little downhill in the beginning they had fights but in private I could still hear them because my room is like right next to theirs but then they started having fights in front of me in the car or when we were out I mostly just sit there and look at my phone because I get tired of it and I also don't want to say anything because I know my mom is gonna say it's nothing so I don't bother 
but sometimes this has been really getting on my nerves and whenever my mom and I have a disagreement or if I'm just next to him, he butts in and drops his unnecessary comments and says stuff like, whenever she asks for something, we don't give her attitude or next time we will act like you are and we'll see how you feel. And I don't even give them attitude, just stuff like that to my mom. I also agree with him while I'm in front of them so I can only imagine what he says in private. I feel like he's trying to be my dad and I honestly don't have a need for a dad and I feel like I will never call anyone dad in my whole life. I usually also have to bite my tongue when he makes comments like this because I don't want it to become a bigger problem or get my phone and laptop and stuff taken away so I usually don't say anything. I just really don't know what to do. I feel like if I tell my mom, she would want to know why I feel that way or go off on him. But I also feel like if I keep building up my anger, I will just go off on him and another problem will come after. I have seen your videos about your stepdad, so I hope you can give me advice. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Nikki. I love you. I love you. Okay, so this is definitely something that a lot of you guys are either going to go through, have gone through, or some of you guys may not even know about this life because you either got parents that stayed together forever or a single parent that just stayed single. So step parents are a little bit tricky and that's funny coming from me because I'm a step parent. I'm a stepmother to a beautiful son. I don't call him my stepson. I call him my son because I love him like my son. Um, when it comes to step parents, here's the thing. You're 14 years old and you're meeting him at this time, which is about the same time that I met my stepdad. In my opinion, the older you are, the less likely you are to accept this person as your step parent to have an opinion about what you should do to be able to discipline you and give you constructive criticism without you taking offense to it, right? When a step parent comes into the picture and you're already older, you're already a teenager, right? Your upbringing and how you carry yourself and your responsibility and you as a person is reflective of either the other parent, which is your father that you say that hasn't been in your life, or the sole parenting of your mother, okay? You are like a literal representation of how she raised you. And sometimes when they go after you like that and they're, they're disappointed in you all the time and they critique you all the time and they're kind of, you kind of feel like they're picking on you, sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with you and it has everything to do with their resentment for your mom or the parent that raised you. Like, um, you didn't raise her right you didn't do a good enough job and I need to come in and save the day and be the parent that raises her right, right? Sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes when your step parent is fighting with your parent, then they start coming after you. It's like more of a jab to your mom. Like, you didn't even raise your daughter right. Look, she don't even clean. Like, she's being disrespectful. She got an attitude. And that's why I need to be here to, like, kind of show her you need me. Not only do you need me in the sense of being in a relationship with me, but you need me in the sense because you you ain't doing what you need to do as a parent. When I was a teenager, I was always very headstrong and independent and all that. I was basically the same person that I am now. But back then, I had a hairpin trigger, and I did not like being told what to do besides from my mother. Like, my mother could correct me. My mother could give me constructive criticism. My mother could tell me what to do, um, and I did not accept that from him. I'm sorry. And I had a lot of issues, and there could be underlying issues that you're facing in regards to, you know, are you okay with having a man tell you what to do? That was my problem, and I had to make that very clear to him. I can't tell you how many times I used to sit down with him and be like, you're not understanding me though. Like you're trying to come out the woodwork right now and I'm already 14 years old, I'm already in high school. Like in about four years, I'm gonna be out this bitch and you're trying to tell me how I need to live my life. And I was also taking offense like, you obviously think that my mom basically did a crappy job raising me. And you know, I. I'm going to take offense to that. That's number one. Number two, you are not my father and I have not ever allowed any man to tell me what to do. I'm not used to it. I will not get used to it and it's just not in my nature to do so. I was not raised that way and I'm so sorry about it, sir, but if you're going to be a part of this family and be a part of this dynamic and this this situation right here you're going to need to understand that and back the hell up because if you have an issue with me i would prefer for you to either sit down with my mom 
or talk to my mom and have my mom talk to me because that's just how it's been for the last 14 years of my life. I'm not a child. It's different with like a situation like Julian and I. I met Julian when he was three years old, right? So like he doesn't even, he legitimately doesn't even remember meeting me and I've just always been here and I've always been a person that's been in his life and honestly y'all I did not start like correcting behavior with him until he really he hardly ever needed correction but when he did I didn't start stepping into that role until he was like six or seven years old like I let him have three or four years of getting used to me and trusting me and getting acclimated to me being a part of his life and honestly just having that trust in me that I'm going to lead him the right way. I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm not trying to single you out. I'm not trying to make you feel bad about yourself, my love. I'm here to love you and support you and try to guide you the right way. And he was small enough for him. Now he understands that. So when I come at him and I have a conversation with him, so now we have the type of relationship that I'm his stepmom and I am one of his parents and I can have a conversation with him with or without his father being there and he and I have an understanding that I love him and that I don't mean bad by it and I just want to see him do his best and be his best. Do you feel that way about your stepdad? If the answer is no and you don't feel like he's coming at you with love and support and with the best intention in mind, my love, the only thing that I can tell you is for you to talk to your mom because that was the mistake that I made when I was a teenager and my mom tells me all the time now, you should have come to me. Why didn't you come to me? I really wish you would have come to me. I wish you would have told me how you were feeling. And we were so busy protecting each other, my mom and I, that we went through a lot with, our, with my stepdad that we didn't have to go through. At the end of the day, you are your mom's ride or die. You were there first. You will always be there. There ain't nothing about their relationship that has anything to do with you. If they break up tomorrow, you will always and forever be her daughter. So your loyalty and open communication needs to be on par with your mother. You need to make sure that that, that doesn't ever get broken. Regardless of whether he's here, another man's there, whatever happens, you, you and your mom are like this. And my mom and I almost lost that because we were going through our own thing and we allowed this stress and we allowed a third party to come into our relationship and alter things and it doesn't need to be like that. Talk to your mom, like legit talk to your mom and don't come at her, you know, She's going to look at you and be like, you're a teenager. You don't want nobody telling you what to do or whatever. And you just need to be honest with her and be like, mom, like this is whatever it is that your issue is. My personal issue was, I, I don't, I don't know what it's like to have a dad. I don't want to have a dad. Like make sure that she knows that I had to be honest with my mom and be like, Hey, I'm happy for you and everything. And I know you want us to be a family. And I'm not trying to be that one to like ruin your little picturesque family idea, but I'm not about this life. It's making me very uncomfortable. I don't want to call him dad. I will never call him dad. I don't want this to be forced on me. And I just want him to make you happy. That's all. And like I had to be really blunt and honest with my mother about that. And, you know, she had to, uh, your mom's probably not going to be happy about it. More often than not, your mom has your back and your needs matter more to her than her own needs do. So I love you. Thank you so much for writing into me and giving me the chance to give you my mediocre advice. Um, definitely check out the polls to see what your fellow Glamazons are saying about your particular situation as well as in the comments down below. I love you and I hope things get better. I know that they will. Just talk to your mom. That's what I should have done differently back when I was going through this. So I love you. I wish you the best of luck, my love. So I'm going to go right into the next email. The subject line says, will I regret staying with him? College is confusing AF. Yas, girl, I know. Hi, Nikki. I love your advice videos and I look at you like my big sister. So I thought on the off chance of you reading this and answering, I might as well email you. My question is pretty much said in the subject line of this email. My boyfriend of nine months and I are both 18 and are literally so in love. 
Adults I know always say to me, you don't know what love is. But with him, I genuinely and wholeheartedly know that I do. I know we haven't been dating that long, and I know it sounds crazy, but from the first time I went on a date with him, I just knew that I loved him. And so much that I can't even fathom how deep it is for him. Sometimes I just think about how lucky I am that I found this love of my life so young. People search for years for what my boyfriend and I have. One of the best parts about all of this is that I know that he feels the same way about me and there is not one part in my mind that makes me feel like he doesn't or that he would ever mess around on me or do anything to hurt me on purpose. Maybe it seems naive of me to say, but I know that I would do anything to spend the rest of my life with him and I know he feels the same way. He's really not a typical high school boy that is a stereotypical dick and I could go on for hours about how amazing he is. With all that being said, he is my first boyfriend ever. We're both going to college next year, both to the same one out of coincidence, and I'm just worried that our relationship is going to get fucked up. Things that I'm worried about. She, she gave me a list, okay? So let's go through the list. All right, so things I'm worried about. Missing out on things in college like flirting with other guys, dancing with whoever I want. Let's be honest, a lot of teen girls make friends through relating to each other with boys and eventually resenting him because I didn't get that experience. Then because of all that, someday waking up and not being happy anymore or vice versa for him. This email might be a little bit of a mess, but basically my question is, how do I deal with these questions and concerns I have? My boyfriend and I have an amazing relationship. We are extremely good at communicating and I've talked to him about these things. He, however, doesn't have the same concerns, if any, which brings me to my next worry. If I was truly meant to be with him, would I be questioning our relationship so much or am I just over romanticizing that whole notion because of romantic movies and books? I feel like if I don't get over this internal struggle with myself that is causing me distress for no reason, I feel like I'm going to end up self-sabotaging my relationship and ruining it. I'm sorry this email was all over the place, but it's something I just needed advice on. This question is very relatable to other girls in my position. I have a lot of friends and relationships that feel the same way as well. I try to ask my friends, but this is just a little bit out of their realm of wisdom. Thank you so much for this if you ever end up looking at this. Love, Carly. Aw, Carly. This is such a good email. I love it. This is actually a really, really good topic. More often than not, you have young girls that are worried about never finding love, ever. They're just never gonna find it. It's not in the cards for them. Like, they have to settle. There ain't no guy out there or girl or whatever or love of their life and they're just worried. And sometimes that makes them stay with people that genuinely don't make them happy out of fear that they're not gonna find somebody else, right? Okay, so that's, that's generally what you hear from women especially, this is the complete opposite, okay? And I'm actually really, really excited to talk about this because I felt this way at least a few times um, because I went through this, you guys. I went through this exact same thing and I thought that I was losing my mind and it actually makes me feel so much better that other girls go through this. So this is now the opposite situation. Let's just say you find the love of your life very quickly. I found David when I was 19 years old, as most of you guys know. Now that is not to say that that's normal. Everyone has their own timeline to find love or for love to find them rather because you don't find love, love finds you. It's just the way that it works, okay? Now, let's say love finds you very young and you just know it, you have a feeling and this person makes you happy. You guys have great communication skills. You guys, you know, just, it just works, it just fits, and your soul and your spirit is just completely, you know that you know that you know. But, and however, you face the problem of what if. And that means this experience is done. Like, this entire dating experience, you know, going out to clubs and flirting experience, going out to spring break and just being crazy with your single friends, you know, all of those experiences will no longer apply to you because you found your love at a very young age. Are you okay with that? Is that making you a little bit weird and like freaked out? Um, because obviously everyone wants the most out of life. Even when you get everything that you ask for, you always wonder if the grass is greener on the other side. What is it like over there? Because it seems like a lot of fun. <laughs> Literally experienced the same exact 
thing with David, okay? So, as most of you guys know, I had my serious, serious relationship in high school for about two years with Robert's funky ass. And after he and I broke up, there was not a whole lot of time. I mean, it was almost a year. It was almost a year of me being single before I met David. And then I met David. And you guys, David and I never had like moments of like breaks or like there was never any point in our relationship that we weren't sure that we were meant to be together. Now, I'm not, that's not to say that we didn't face some hardships or, you know, some complex situations, but we always knew this was this was more than just the average relationship. David is three years older than me, so that means that he had more time to experiment. Obviously, you know, he had a child outside of our relationship. It's like he had an entire lifetime before even meeting me. And I was so young. I was, you know, fresh out of high school. I was in college, you know, like I was just getting started with my life. And here's my boyfriend that has a three-year-old son and has, you know, lived a little bit more than I have. When I started feeling these really intense feelings for him and these really, like, undeniable love for him, it scared the shit out of me. And most girls are like, oh my god, like I would give anything to have that. I would give anything to feel that. I would give anything for somebody to feel like that about me and all this, right? And yes, that's that's true because it is really hard to find, especially nowadays. And I'm, I'm not saying that this is something for you to complain about, but there's always a part of you that's like, oh my god. Is this the right decision? Am I making the right decision? Because you're right, you're about to go into college. And when you get into this serious relationship so young, you are giving up a few things. You're giving up that experience. You're giving up, you know, crazy one night stands and, you know, going out with your friends and dancing with guys and like, you know, the, the single crazy life. You're giving that up to be in this relationship and hoping and praying that it works out and how more than anything, you just sit there and you're like, oh my God, this is really happening for me. How, how, how out of all of these girls and all of the people in the world, how am I so lucky to have found this so young and for it to be true and real and oh my God and breathtaking and am I absolutely insane? Like, is am I crazy right now? Because obviously this doesn't happen to people, okay? So you start questioning yourself. And it was no different for me, girl. No different. Because I started feeling this way about David. David was feeling this way about me. I was not, nor have I ever had issues with David that other women have had with, like, their significant others or, like, their boyfriends or whatever. I've never had to worry about him cheating. I've never had to worry about it. Like, I trust him so much. And it's been that way since we first got together. But I had the same question. What if? I'm missing out. I didn't want to be tied down again and then find out that it was for no reason because obviously, you know, I didn't get to live my best life in high school because I was tied down to Robert's funky ass. I didn't want that happening again. I didn't want my time being wasted. Like you, I had multiple conversations with David and it was a little bit more insightful when I talked to him because I was able to ask him questions. And these questions to him seemed a little bit unorthodox, number one, and kind of funny because I was asking him questions like he, he really is my best friend. And I, y'all, I would go in and I would ask him very uncomfortable questions like, what does a one night stand feel like? I don't know. I would ask him, you know, how do you know that you want to be with me forever? Like, you know, don't you, aren't you scared that you're going to miss out on something? Like, don't you want to be single for a few years and like, you know, have your bachelor days or whatever, you know, like I'm, and I would be honest with him and be like, you know, I'm afraid that I'm going to miss out on X, Y, and Z because we're together and it's so serious. And David broke it down like this. He said a lot of the single life is hyped up, honestly. He was like, I'm not just saying that to, you know, spare your feelings. And David didn't. David had to be very honest with me about shit that really broke my heart. But he did that because you already know my rules and my regulations when it comes to if you need to tell me something, you better tell me, not anybody else. You better not give nobody else room to tell me something that you should have told me. So when he and I first got together, y'all, this boy, 
all the time was laying shit out for me like look I know that this is not going to make you feel great this is not going to make you proud of me but I want to be the one to tell you that I did this and I did that and this is what I went through and this is the bad decision that I made so he was upfront and honest and he was like you want to know about one night stands he was like they're awkward as shit they're really awkward he was like um you don't know this person you don't love this person you don't have any connection with this person and then after the moment moment passes and you have sex with them and then all of a sudden you just have this stranger in your bed he was like I used to come up with excuses for them to leave and he was like because you know I don't know you I don't want to cuddle with you I don't want like you all over me he was like and half the time they felt the same way and like they just wanted to leave because there was no connection there there was no oh my god I think that you're amazing and you're so smart and you're like the perfect person for me he was like it's just an awkward situation he was like so that's number one you're not missing out on anything with that he was like I would much rather go to a movie with you a thousand times than for me to be able to go to a club and talk to a thousand different girls he was like because more often than not I'm not gonna find anything substantial about them he was like and then I just found myself getting more annoyed than anything else like it was just annoying and David said something to me that really proved to me that he loved me with all his heart and I was 19 years old keep this in mind and I was extremely independent and very very stubborn I'm not here to stop you from experiencing life um, and I love you and I would do anything in the world for you and if you feel like you're missing out on something and you want these experiences he was like it will break my heart and it will break me in two but I will let you go so that you can go experience that and I will wait and I will be here if you ever want to try this again but I'm telling you right now, I've been through it, I've seen it, I've done it, and it's just not all it's cracked up to be. I will let you go and I will let you experience it. And if life brings us back together, great. If not, then you knew what it was like on the other side. And I, y'all, when I heard that and I saw the amount of commitment this man had and I saw the amount of selflessness that he had, in order for me to just be okay with the decision that I was making by being with him, it was hands down the easiest decision that I ever made in my life. I was like, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm fine. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I just need to stop worrying. And you make this decision, whatever decision that it may be, make sure that it's settling in your spirit right. And David really helped a lot with that because he was honest and he was very transparent. He was very selfless with that conversation. And I can't even imagine having the strength to tell him, I will let you go. A lot of girls come to me and they ask me, you know, I'm with this guy and he has a kid or I'm getting into this serious relationship and I'm really young. What do you think? And more often than not, I advise them to go live their life. I advise them to go and have fun and just live their life to the fullest. Um, because not every guy and not every person is wanting, is 100% sure that they're wanting to settle down at such a young age. So make sure that your man is on the same page as you are. And if it's if it's settling okay with your soul you could just be tripping for no reason girl because i was tripping for no reason fast forward seven years i'm married i'm about to have this man's baby you know things just worked out and if it weren't for that conversation and david putting himself aside like that and that was mm, girl like <laughs> i was like oh my god you are my husband Maybe love just found you really early, my love. But uh, I hope it works out. Make sure you have this conversation with your boyfriend and see what he has to say about it. And make sure you guys are on the same page. That's all this needs to be. Just make sure you guys are like this. So I wish you guys the best of luck. Have so much fun in college. And don't forget to check the polls up above on the top right hand corner of your screen to see what your fellow Glamazons are saying, okay? Because some of them might have a different opinion than I do and that's absolutely fine. Check it out and also check out the comments. Everyone, let's come together and give your thoughts. Even if it's completely different than what I'm saying, that's absolutely fine. We can just start up a conversation. Thank you so much, Carly, for writing into me. I really appreciate it and I wish you the best of luck, love. Okay, so I'm probably just going to do one more email because my boys are on their way home. Um, so we're going to be answering this email and this is from my girl Rosa. Hey Rosa. 
and her subject line says we moved in together getting sorry us okay hello nikki before jumping into my question i'd like to remind you of how special you are you are truly a role model and you are the only reason why i started watching youtube so much i love how honest and real you are and i hope that never changes oh, thanks girl okay i'm emailing you because i recently moved in with my now fiance about a month ago we were going to elope, so he proposed, but now I feel like I'd rather wait and live together for a few years before marrying and having children. We both agree that we want to wait at least three years for children. He is working full-time, and I am a current student in college. I will graduate in the fall with a bachelor's and a minor. He is very supportive and helpful. However, I can't help but feel very frustrated at times. I'm a planner like you, and I feel like I have to have everything under control and plan everything out. It is not easy for me to handle full-time school, part-time job, home chores, and having time for him as well. He helps me out a lot at home and respects my privacy when I'm studying and doing homework. We are both about 300 miles from our family, so we only have each other and a roommate we live with. Are there any tips you can give me on how to make our relationship succeed? I know you lived with David for some time before marriage. How long did you guys live together? How did you guys adjust to one another? How long did you date before moving in? Do you have any tips or advice? Please be as real with me as possible as I don't want a fantasy story. I need the hard truth. Did you ever think you might have made a mistake because you were so young? And did you discuss this with your parents and how did they react? I know your mom is very strict as, as are my parents. Please help. Any advice is truly appreciated. Thank you so much. I love you, Rosie. I, I did things very, um, very um, non-traditionally. Let's just say that, okay? And I'm going to be as honest with you as I can, girl, all right? So the first question is, how long did you guys live together? So David and I, <laughs> you want the hard truth? I'm going to give you the hard truth. David and I have been together. It'll be seven years in August. We moved in together after three months of being together, and that was very, very fast. I know, but that's our truth. How long did you guys live together for? So that means that we've been living together for over six years at this point. How did you guys adjust to one another? So David and I's situation was, as per usual with our relationship, was very unorthodox and, and very, you know, it w it's not the norm. David had, you know, other things going on in his life, you know, as far as having a child and things like that. And his living situation was not stable. And um, it broke my heart. And I was in love with this man. And I had my apartment downtown. Um, it was a two bedroom. So I felt like, you know what, there's more than enough space. And I saw him going through what he was going through and as the man that i loved even though it had only been three months girl i plunged we talked and we discussed it we came to the conclusion that the most logical thing would be for him to move in with me now as far as the adjustment period obviously we had not known each other for that long um prior to him moving in and i remember distinctly the day that he did move in and he started like he just came home from work one day and he had his things with him and he was like moving them into the apartment was sitting on the couch watching tv and like he was like yeah you know i don't have i don't have that much you know whatever he had been living with his best friend before we met and um so he was just like you know bringing random things into my apartment and i remember feeling this like overwhelming like just for a split second this feeling of panic like oh my god this is happening like he's moving in he's moving all of his shit in oh my boy and I was like oh my god am I making a mistake I don't really know him that well oh my god he has a kid I'm not thinking about this like oh my god like I had a panic moment and I think he kind of felt it and after he like moved in his stuff he sat down next to me and he was like you know are you sure you're okay with this and don't worry and you know I'm more than happy to help out with rent and you know with bills and I do not plan on just being here and just you know mooching off of you or whatever and he just kind of made it very nonchalant like this does not need to be a big deal I know that it's a big deal but I don't want you to freak out about it it's like he could feel me um, and honestly the adjustment period was so easy i don't know what it was about david and i but we meshed really well and i'm not just saying that this is not a fantasy story um it just worked out really well david grew up with a very strict mother as well 
and um, so she taught him how to clean and how to cook and how to you know clean up after himself and when he moved in he was very diligent about that like I think that he just did not want to be an issue and he did not want to be a nuisance for me and he had a lot of respect for my place and my space so he would clean a lot and he would do the dishes and take out the trash and like he just meshed in really really well with my schedule and with my habits and stuff and we just the adjustment period really wasn't that big of a deal like it just one day he was there and it just meshed really really well and I think that we're very blessed and very lucky um, because some people are just total opposites but David and I just the way that we live and the way that we function was very very similar so there wasn't really a whole lot of adjusting to do when he moved in thank god honestly david and i are kind of the same person like i don't know it, it, you know as far as like personality wise we really are very similar um the only difference is yeah i'm, I'm a lot more organized and i'm a planner and planning is not david's shit that is not his it's not his strength he gets very stressed out when he looks into the future he's a you know live day by day kind of person and i'm like i need to plan my months out in advance so that was pretty much the only thing that we had to like get adjusted to but everything else was just very easy like we liked binge watching supernatural together and we liked going on snack runs and spending an ungodly amount of money on chips and you know we were still kids in a sense when we first got together um so we had habits that were so alike and like it just he was like me like <laughs> we were kind of like the same person as far as how to have a lasting relationship honestly it shouldn't be that hard it should not be a difficult thing for you to be able to talk to your your significant other or your boyfriend your girlfriend it should be the easiest thing in the world and so anytime i had like worries or concerns or i was like mm, that might be a problem i had no issue like sitting down and being like hey I love you and everything but can you stop doing this or can we start doing this or whatever and he'd be like yeah you know absolutely like let's start doing that and so you know it was just it was just that but like we never had issues like you know oh he didn't do the laundry or oh he was like super messy and I wasn't or whatever um, at the time David was producing beats on the side and that can take up a lot of time and that was probably the biggest issue that we had is it took so much time up and like he would have to like play the same beat over and over and oh my god you guys it would drive me nuts and I would be like please wear your headphones because I'm tired of hearing the same shit over and over again and so you know we bumped heads on that a little bit but it was never anything that was like oh my god I can't stand you it was like please just I'm tired of hearing the same snare over and over and over and over again like put your headphones on because I'm trying to watch my show I still went out with my friends like my best friend at the time Heather funky ass or whatever and I still had my own life outside of David even after we got together like you know and it's the same way now and I think that that's a huge factor by the way don't like just make him your end all and be all now that you're you know you're 300 miles away from your family and friends make new friends have your own hobby have your own things going on go to brunch with your girlfriend go get your nails done give him a moment because that's honestly I think that was also a big thing like he would have some of his friends come over or like I would give him alone time when Julian would come over and you know it was really important that we spent some time separate not a whole lot of time but some like me time so that I didn't lose myself and he didn't lose himself oh you had one more question how did my parents deal with it it's actually really funny because my mom obviously had no choice I was an adult I was paying my own bills I had my own apartment right and so she was in New York when I got with David and then she started like feeling sick as most of you guys know and if you don't know my mom got really really sick about five years ago now um, and she ended up having cancer and she was living in New York at the time and um, she started telling me that she was feeling bad and at this time I we didn't know what was happening she decided to move back to Denver so that she could be like around me or whatever and go get seen and go to the doctor and figure out what the hell was going on and that's when we found out that she had cancer 
it took her left kidney and she had major surgery and David was there for me through all that. And during that time, because I had a two bedroom, my mom moved in with me and David. So like me and David were in a room together and then my mom had her own room. So we were like under the same roof within the first year of David and I being together. So my mom didn't really have like a whole lot of say in the situation. She demanded that she meet him face to face before like, you know, moving in or whatever. She came over and she made dinner. I had David and I sit down with her over dinner and I just let her ask him any questions that she wanted to ask him and they were very, very hard questions. And you know, like what happened with your baby mom and like, you know, what are your intentions with my daughter, three years older than her and like what you want with her kind of thing. And David handled it really, really well. And when I tell you guys that this boy was able to gain my mom's approval after that dinner, it was the craziest thing I ever seen in my life. Okay, y'all have heard about my mama and my mother is like very, very protective over me. And legit, you guys, after that dinner with him, she was like, I don't have any issue with him. He's like a sweetheart. I don't feel any like bad energy coming off of him. I can tell that he cares about you a lot. He's not like just in this relationship for his own gain. And I think that you may be making the right decision. And I think that he loves you a lot. And then, you know, we all started living in the same house together. That is my story and my spiel of the inner workings of David and I's relationship in the beginning. So I hope this helped. Um, I wish you the best of luck, girl. Sometimes, you know, if it's easy, it's easy. And all I can say is make sure that you maintain communication. If there's anything that's bothering you, be very honest with him. And how he responds to that is indicative of whether or not this entire situation is going to work. And also make sure that you have your like your own thing going on. You know, make your friends go out with them, have brunch with them or have like dinner with them or whatever. And have your own thing going on like a few times a week just to, you know, maintain yourself and your needs. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's that's our truth. That's that's our story. So I hope that helped. And provided some insight for you and I wish you the best of luck and I know that this is scary and it's a risk and it's a plunge and you know that's what life is you just have to jump and hope it works out girl so I love you and I hope everything works out thank you so much for writing to me and giving me the chance to give you my mediocre advice all of you guys that are getting advice don't forget to check the polls to see what your fellow Glamazons are saying and check out the comments too. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me for Ask Nikki today. I really missed it. I really enjoy it. It lets me connect with you guys in a whole different way and give you guys my mediocre advice and my personal experiences. I love you guys. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in to another video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up to let me know and don't worry, pregnancy update video is coming and a story time is coming and I got some like other videos coming up like kind of like lifestyle videos i'm very excited but um definitely stay tuned don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you're notified because youtube be tripping and playing you and not telling you when i'm posting but anyways thank you guys so so much i love you and i will see you guys very soon in my next video peace out